Okay, here we go. Uh, today's a big day, folks. Um, we're going to add up right-hand uh, rectangles, but we're also going to do left-hand. We're also going to do trapezoidal, and we're also going to do midpoint. Yeah, very well played. Oh, yeah. Mr. What? Like a t-shirt. All right. So we have a function. Define on this interval from A to B. And we want to be able to write an expression for the area of that. That's the whole idea, folks. It's what we're, it's the big idea. They find the area underneath the curve. We're approximating it right now. Okay, taking baby steps here. And we wrote a, what do we write? We, we wrote kind of this general rule the other day. We said you take the width of each interval and multiply it by the sum of the heights. This is kind of the idea we're rolling with, okay? A for the day. If I want to take this interval, B to A, A to B, and I want to divide it up into N rectangles, What's the width of each rectangle? Thank you. B minus A, whatever that distance is, times N. Or divide by N. Then the sum of the heights. So we use this sigma here. That refers to sum. Okay. And what we do is we start with, uh, we evaluate it at these certain points. And we start with i equals 1 for whatever that spot is, and then we go all the way through n. Uh, it's, it's an i, that's a subscript. So we don't know exactly what these x values are until we have a function. So, but let's just look at an example right here okay so suppose I've got this interval I'll divide it up into four spaces there you go if I do the right hand sum okay we'll call this x sub 1 x sub 2 x sub 3 this would be x sub 0 this would be x sub 4 okay you tell me okay when I evaluate this and I do a right hand sum What's the right side of this interval? X sub 1. But if I was doing a left-hand sum, I would do X sub 0. So right-hand sum, I'll do X sub 1, then I'll do X sub 2, then I'll do X sub 3, then I'll do X sub 4. But watch what happens if I do the left-hand. Left-hand, I do X sub 0, then X sub 1, then X sub 2, then X sub 3. I would never do x sub 4. So for the right hand, you start with 1 and you go to n. But for the left hand, you got the same width. But you start over at the 0 spot and you go to n minus 1. It's a very crude notation compared to what we should actually be writing, but I think it's enough for you guys to understand. And then what's really cool, okay, I, I think it's really cool, all right? I, I want you guys to try to appreciate this for a second. I'm going to draw a right-hand sum for the x sub 3 spot. Overestimation or underestimation? Under. I'll draw a left-hand sum. Over or under? Over. Well, watch this. What if I make it into a trapezoid? I mean, that that's pretty good, isn't it? I mean, it, it's, it's not perfect, but it's, it's pretty good. Looking at this, can you see that the trapezoidal sum is simply the average of the left hand and the right hand? So therefore, trapezoidal sum 
which is equal to left hand sum plus right hand sum and we divide that by two once you get the right hand and left hand average them to get trapezoidal and then there's one more and it's uh it's called the midpoint and if we were be if we would be looking at this interval right here from x3 x sub 3 to x sub 4 okay i i wouldn't move to the left i wouldn't move to the right i would go right in the middle so you would take this middle spot you would draw the height and then you would go to the left from there and the right from there and you can see that what you get is you get an underestimation here but you get an overestimation there and they, they kind of cancel each other out don't they so that's kind of cool Fire. okay so um, really what happens is you average these two pieces and that's what you evaluate so sum up uh, f for x sub i <laughs> plus x sub i plus 1, and we divide that thing by 2. Okay, so look at problem one. We're going to change it just a little bit. We're only going to go to x equals 2. Instead of constructing 8, we're just going to do 4. We're going to do left, right hand sum, left hand sum, trapezoidal sum, and midpoint sum. Okay. Over 2. So, what does the graph of the square root of x look like? Okay. So <clears throat> I want to divide this into four rectangles. One, three, four, six, one, half, three halves. Let's do the right hand sum first. We're we're used to doing that, right? Okay, so we're gonna right hand sum. So first I need the width. I'm going to need the width for all these. Or I get the width, I take B, which is 2, minus A, which is 0. I divide that by how many rectangles? 4. And I get a half. So 1 half is the width of each interval. So I'm going to do right hand sum. Right hand sum will be one half times the sum of the heights. I'm going to draw the right hand rectangles. Right hand, do I, do I draw it at zero or one half? I don't know why, only because I've never really had the question understood it. But people don't like that when they draw the right hand rectangle, that they're drawing over to the left. It, it's never occurred to me that that's a problem. You, you have to draw a rectangle for this interval. So the only way to draw it is go over to the left. You're drawing it for the interval. So this just determines the height of it. Overestimation or under? Over. So what's going to determine the height? So what do I plug in? Square root of a half plus square root of one plus square root of three halves plus the square root of two. Everybody okay with that? So I got those values. This is essential. If you don't get this part, we, we've got to stop it and start again. Okay. So 0.5 parentheses square root of 0.5 parentheses plus one plus. 
square root of 1.5 parentheses plus square root of 2. 2.173. Get that? Alright, we know that's an overestimation. So let's do something we haven't done before. Let's do the left hand sum now. So what will change with the left hand sum? Yeah, and so like left hand sum, at what height do I evaluate it right now? What spot? I evaluate zero. So I don't have anything there. And I go to here. And I go to here. So that will be one half times the square root of what? Zero plus the square root of a half plus the square root of one plus the square root of three halves. <coughs> Everybody pause, pause, look up here, look up here. Right, right, right. See how these are similar and how they're different? This one has a half, so does this one. One and one, three halves, three halves. It's just the endings get cut off. This one doesn't include a zero, but it includes a two. This one includes a zero, but it doesn't include the two. It's just the endings get swapped off. That's it. Just like here, look. The endings get swapped off. Here, one to n. Here, zero to n minus one. See the difference? It's the most important part of today. All right. So, what do you get? No. 1.724. I'll try it. <laughs> uh, 0.5. Parentheses square root of 0.5 parentheses plus 1 plus square root of 1.5 parentheses equals, yep, 1.466. All right. All right. Trapezoidal sum. This is my favorite because it's so easy. Look, we're going to take these shapes and now we're just going to make trapezoids out of them and what that does is it simply you know is that could be overestimate or underestimate a little bit under trapezoidal if it's concave down is a little under trapezoidal if it's uh, concave up is a little over okay so as you look at this estimate here trapezoidal I'll simply average the two so I take 2.173 plus 1.466 and I divide it by 2. What do you get? 1. Alright. Yep. I remember that from last hour. Alright. And then finally, the we're going to do midpoint and I'll show you how to do exact. Midpoint. Same thing, one half times. But if I look at the middle, so now I want to do the middle of these rectangles. What's to be the middle of zero one half? Yeah, so one fourth. And then three fourths. Then five fourths, seven fourths. And as I draw these rectangles, really important. Okay, I go to the spot and then I expand over each side. So that's that's my shape. Oh, so that's my midpoint. And hopefully that's a very accurate measure. Okay, so midpoint measure, I will take one half times the square root of a fourth plus the square root of three fourths plus the square root of five fourths square root of 7 fourths. So you don't get to reuse anything from before, do you? The 
because it's still the width of the rectangle at the bottom. Marcus is correct, so I put point five because I'm an idiot. Two five. Let's see, plus square root of point seven five. Plus square root of one point two five. Plus square root of one point Double parenthesis, 1.903. All right. Watch. I'm going to show you how on your calculator you can come up with an exact estimate. So I mean, your calculator is is giving you, um, you know, what we're going to use is an exact answer, but your calculator at very best comes up with an estimate, the most accurate estimate that you can come up with. And here's what it means. This is an integral symbol. It means the area bounded beneath the function on the y-axis from the lower bound to the upper bound. So in this case, we went from 0 to 2. And it doesn't say, let's do 5 rectangles, so let's do an infinite number. And you put your function in there. You put this DX behind it. DX stands for width. I can type that into my calculator. <coughs> so, here's what you do. You go into Y equals, type square root of X. Then, what you do is you go second calculate. You see something that looks like that integral symbol I just talked about? Seven, grab it, and it asks for the lower limit. I'm gonna. So I'm gonna. So I don't. It doesn't want really to pop up. Okay, so number seven, and they asked for the lower limit. Our lower was zero. Our upper limit was our upper. Two. Now watch it draw the rectangle. This is zero. Watch, 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 watch. Uh, cool. Look at it. Zing. Uh, 1.89 about. Oh, the lower limit is zero. That was the, that was the lower part right here. From zero to two. See that? So now you know how to do... All four, right hand, left hand, midpoint, trapezoidal, right? And you know the integral piece, so you know five. So that's going to be your assignment today. Um, did I give it to you yet? This sheet? Okay, so the one that you guys are taking notes on, we're going to do the backside part of it on Monday or on Tuesday. But this is your assignment that we'll work on when we get back from break, okay? When we get back from lunch, lunch is... Sorry, break, lunch, whatever. It's not really break.